Hi there. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to find the mean and the standard deviation of a small distribution. In this case, we have five numbers. We are asked to find two measures for this distribution. The first measure is the mean. The mean is one of the three averages that you will learn about. To find the mean, we just add up all of the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. So what we do is this. 3 plus 8 plus 37 plus 20 plus 7 divided by the number of numbers, which is 5. Now we add them all up and 3 and 8 is 11 plus 37 is 48 plus 20, 68 plus 7, 75. And divide by 5 and that goes in 15 times. So our mean is 15. We label this X bar or you will sometimes see it labelled as mu. So these two here are two different symbols that you will see for the mean, x bar or mu. Now the next piece of data is the standard deviation. Now the standard deviation uses the mean. We have the mean which is 15 and in order to find the standard deviation we need to find how far each piece of data deviates from the mean. So we're finding a standard deviation. By deviate from the mean I mean this. Take for example this number 3. How far does it deviate from the mean? Well the mean is 15 and 3 is 12 units away from the 15. So its deviation is 12. If we take another number say for example 8, how far does it deviate from the mean? It deviates by 7. 15 take away 8 is 7. So all of these pieces of data will deviate by different amounts and we want to get a standard deviation. Let's have a look at the formula for standard deviation. You'll find this on page 33 of your tables and formula book. Here we have the formula for standard deviation. It's on page 33 of your tables book. I'll circle it here in red and you see it says from a list of n numbers. So n in this case is 5 because we have 5 numbers. Let's write this formula out again. The formula says that mu, the standard deviation, is equal to the square root of, well in here we have our deviations, that's x minus mu. In the case of 3, 3 is our x value and 15 is our mu. So 3 minus 15 is minus 12. So our deviation in this case is minus 12. However, the formula says that we square all of these deviations. So minus 12 when we square it gives us 144. Then the formula says we need to add up all of these squared deviations. That's this sigma sign. And finally when we've done that, we divide by n, which is 5. So let's see how this works in principle. For example, the first number is 3 minus 15. We then square it and then we have to add the next one which is 8 minus 15 and then we square it and we add the next one and we keep going for all of the numbers and we divide by 5. Ultimately then we get the square root of the answer. So that's how the formula works. In practice, it's a good idea to write out a table. This is a great way to show your examiner your work. So how does the table work? Well, first of all, we'll have a column for our x values. Then we'll have our deviations, x minus mu. Then we'll have a column for our squared deviations. And finally, we'll add up these. We'll find the total of those. So our x values were 3, 8, 37, 20, and 7. Now remember that mu is equal to 15. That's our mean. So for each of our pieces of data, we need to subtract 15. So 3 take away 15 
gives us minus 12. 8 take away 15 is minus 7. 37 take away 15 is 22. 20 take away 15 is 5. And 7 take away 15 is minus 8. So these are my deviations from the mean. Now we square each of those deviations. We get 144. We get 49. 22 when we square it gives us, let's do it rough, 222's is 44, and 222's is 44, we get 4 and 8 and 4. I'm sure most of you will use a calculator, but it's no harm to keep practicing your long multiplication as well. When we square 5 we get 25, and when we square minus 8 we get 64. Now, the formula said we had to get the sum of those squared deviations. This sigma here in the formula means that you add up all of the squared deviations. So we, that's what we do here. We simply add up all of these. So when we add up these squared deviations, it comes to 766. This is the top of our fraction inside the square root sign, and we then divide that by 5. So all together, our sigma standard deviation is equal to the square root of 766 over 5, which is equal to the square root of 153.2. So our sigma is equal to 12.3. 7, 7. This is our standard deviation. So we've taken our deviations, we've squared them, we've got the sum of those and we've divided by the number of them. So in other words, inside the square root sign we get the mean of the squared deviations. We add them up and divide by the number of them. And then we get the square root and we get 12.377. This then gives us our standard deviation. It's the root of the mean squared deviations. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do all of this using the calculator. It's a lot quicker, and if there is a large data set of more than five numbers, then it would be a lot easier to use the calculator. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you'll join us for the next one.